So the brother posted a question that uh, the killing of an ant, and even if it is an ant, that it, it is it's harmful. But on the, on the broader side, Muslims normally what they do is they, uh, they try to slaughter cows and, uh, and everything. So they, uh, had, according to him, that Muslims uh, eat more of beef, mutton and... So is that not wrong? Because in both in Gita and Bible and Quran, everywhere, you should show uh, mercy to all animals. So, but that's not being followed. Brother asked the question that even killing an ant is wrong and killing living creature is wrong. So why do Muslims have non-veg by having mutton, beef, killing animals, isn't it wrong? Shouldn't we show mercy? I do agree with the brother, the first part of his question. And I understand that he can understand English, but he cannot speak. There are many people there we have who can understand English, but cannot speak English and they ask in Urdu. So I believe the brother can understand English, but he can't ask the question in English because he's more fluent in Tamil. As far as killing any living creature unnecessary, it's a sin even in Islam. Even in Islam, it's a sin to kill any living creature unnecessary. And there are hadith in which the Prophet has said, when a person was there making a bonfire, the Prophet said, don't make a bonfire there because there are ants. Shift the position. That means the Prophet also was worried that that bonfire may kill the ants. So he asked the Sahabas to shift the position so that the ants don't get killed. Now coming to a basic question, that why do Muslims have non veg killing animals for non veg etc. First I'd like to tell you that a Muslim can be a very good Muslim even by being a pure vegetarian. Eating non veg is not compulsory in Islam, but because our creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given permission to have non veg why should we not have it? If we analyze, it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 1, that eat of the four-footed animals, eat of the four-footed animals which have been made lawful for you. Quran says in Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse number 5, that Almighty God has made for you to eat the meat of the cattle. And several places, Surah Mominun chapter 23 verse 21, many places. Now scientifically if we analyze that there is no vegetarian food which has all the requirements for a human being. The human beings require amino acids. They require 21 amino acids out of which most of them are produced in the body but eight have to be supplemented from the diet. These are called as eight essential amino acids. There is no vegetable which I know of which contains all the eight amino acids. So there's no vegetable which is a complete food. So you have to take this which is present in the non-veg. Furthermore, if you analyze non-veg food, it's nutritious, rich in vitamin K. And furthermore, if you analyze, if you see the teeth of the herbivorous animals, the cow, the goat, the sheep, they have flat set of teeth. They only eat vegetables, they only touch grass. They don't eat flesh food. If you analyze the set of teeth of the carnivorous animals, tiger, lion, leopard, cheetah, they have a pointed set of teeth. They have a canine set of teeth. These animals are known as carnivorous animals. They only eat flesh. They don't eat vegetables. If you analyze the set of teeth of the human beings, if you go in the mirror and see, we human beings, we have got flat teeth as well as pointed teeth. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us this pointed teeth, canine set of teeth? Why? Because Almighty God wanted us to have both vegetables as well as non-veg, flesh food. If he wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us the pointed teeth? Furthermore, if you analyze the digestive system of the human beings, it can digest both veg as well as non-veg. The digestive system of the herbivorous animals, the cow, the goat, the sheep, it can only digest vegetables, it cannot digest flesh food. The digestive system of the carnivorous animals, lion, tiger, leopard, it can only digest flesh food, it cannot digest vegetables. But the digestive system of the human beings has a small intestine and a large intestine. It can digest both veg as well as flesh food, as well as non-veg food. If Almighty God wanted us to be a pure vegetarian, 
Why did he give us the diocese system? We can digest both, but natural to have it. So if you analyze, Almighty God made the human being in such a way so that they could eat vegetables as well as flesh food, veg as well as non-veg. And many people have a misconception that most of the religions, they prohibit the eating of non-veg food. And many of the Hindus, they have a misconception. And they think that Hinduism prohibits the eating of non-veg food. In fact, if you read the Hindu scriptures, if you read Manusmriti, chapter number 5, verse number 30, it says, Almighty God created some animals to eat and some to be eaten. So those who eat the animals created to be eaten, you're not doing a sin. It's mentioned in Manusmriti, chapter number 5, verse number 39. Almighty God created sacrificial animals. So if you eat the sacrificial animals, you're not doing a sin. Manusmriti, chapter number 5, verse number 41 says that killing of the sacrificial animal is not a sin. There are many quotations in the Hindu scriptures which talk about eating of non veg food. If you read Mahabharat, Anushasan Parv, chapter number 88, Yudhishthir, who was the eldest brother of the Pandavas, he asked Bhishma that what things should he give in yagna, in puja, so that our ancestors will be satisfied. So Bhishma replies that if in puja, if in yagna, if you give herbs and shrubs and vegetables, our ancestors will be satisfied for one month. If you give fish, satisfied for two months. If you give meat, for three months. If you give hair, for four months. If you give goat, for five months. If you give bacon, for six months. If you give deer, for six months. If you give birds, for seven months. And the menu keeps on continuing. And it says that if you give buffalo in Yagna, 11 months. If you slaughter a cow, our ancestors will be satisfied for one full year. And if you give a rhinoceros, then our ancestors will be satisfied inexhaustibly. There's a full menu given in Mahabharat. So if you read the Vedas and the Hindu scriptures, the sages and sons, they had non veg they even had beef. But the reason you find many Hindus, they say, that eating non veg is probably because they are being influenced by the non violent philosophy. You know, even the Jains. And what these people who believe in non violent say that killing of living thing is prohibited. Therefore, killing an animal is a sin. So I agree with them that if killing any living creature unnecessary is a sin. But if you say killing living creature is sin per se, then I tell them that even the plants you have, they have got life. Previously, we did not know that plants have got life. Therefore, they used to think that killing plant is fine. Today, we know that even plants have got life. So the logic has changed. Yes, Akir, we agree plants have got life, but plant can't feel pain. Therefore, killing a plant, having vegetable, is lesser sin as compared to having non-veg, that flesh food. Today, science advanced, we have come to know that even the plants can feel pain. But when the plants cry out, we human beings cannot hear the cry of the plant because we can hear only between 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything below and above this we can't hear. So even the plants cry, but we cannot hear the cry of the plant. The plants feel pain. The science tells us, to the logic exchange, they say, yes, yes, Brother Dakir, we understand that plants have got life, they can feel pain, but you know, the plants have got two or three senses, the animal have got five senses. Therefore, killing animal is a greater sin. If I agree with them for sake of argument, that plants have got two, three senses, animal has got five senses, and that is the reason killing animal is a greater sin. So I asked them a question. You know, there was a person who had a brother who was born deaf and dumb, could not hear, could not speak. And someone goes and kills him. Suppose you have a brother who was born deaf and dumb, cannot hear, cannot speak. And if someone kills him, will you go and tell the judge, me, Lord, Give the murderer less punishment because my brother had two senses less. He could not hear, he could not speak. Will you say that? Or you will tell me, Lord, give the murderer double punishment because my brother was masum, he was innocent. He could not hear, he could not speak. So in Islam, 
it does not mean that you have two senses less, you have less punishment, or you have more senses, more punishment. Quran says, eat of the good things they have provided to you. As long as the thing is good and halal, it is permitted you can have. So, in Islam, we are allowed to slaughter an animal only for eating, unnecessary for hunting, for sports is prohibited. Like making a bonfire, ants are being killed, the prophet said, don't do it. So killing any living creature is prohibited unless if it is for eating, for survival, and it is among the permitted animals which God has given permission. As Manu Smriti says, God has created some animal to eat and some to be eaten. If you kill the animal to be eaten, you're not doing a sin. Otherwise, generally, I per se, if you analyze, I've got no problem if the non-Muslims don't have non-veg. Because if every non-Muslim in India starts having non-veg, then the price of mutton and beef will go high. So I've got no problem if the non-Muslims don't have non-veg. But if anyone takes an objection that killing animal is a sin, that's the time I give this answer. Otherwise, in Islam, you can be a very good Muslim even by being a pure vegetarian. But since Allah has given permission, there's no harm if you have non-veg as long as it is among the permitted animals. Hope that answers the question.